We've got Carolina and we've got Nashville in the Discover Central division. Um, two teams who look, I mean, you, you sort of feel like, I mean, the 16 point spread sort of says it all, right? Carolina's got 80 points. Nashville's got 64. Nashville's one of the hottest teams in the league, bud. I'm just saying they sure are. And listen, I think, I do think that matters, right? So the, the spread obviously matters. Of course, Carolina has been the better team all season long, of course, but how you play leading into the playoffs, I think says a lot about your team. Uh, Carolina's five, two and three. That's still really good. They've lost their last two, whatever. Um, but Nashville seven, two and one, mm -hmm. one of the hottest teams. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, let's, let's call it what it is. They've been in a playoff race. They've essentially been in a series with Dallas and they beat them. Didn't they, Adam? They, they beat the Dallas stars. Uh, they've sort of been in playoff mode. So I don't think Carolina sleeps through that series. I think Nashville is going to make it as hard on them as possible. Carolina is still going to win, I think, but Nashville is, uh, they're not a pushover four seed. We talked a little bit on the, uh, on the podcast last week, but now we do officially know that we're going to get the all Florida Tampa, Tampa Panthers. Um, the one thing that the Tampa is adding is Nikita Kucherov, but he hasn't played. So not that that matters because he's Nikita Kucherov, but it, 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 Florida, which had slightly more points this year, can they contend with that? Or is this just like, is this the two, three matchup? That's like, okay, well, we really know who the powerhouse here is. I mean, they've Florida and Tampa have played each other recently. Um, I want to say they had a mini series. Recently. It was uh four, nothing on Monday for the Panthers. The Panthers beat them. Yeah. And Andre Vasilevsky did not look sharp. He was featured. He got a double dang it in Steve's dang it's, which is very rare. Um, but like Tampa, I, they're so playoff hardened and Florida has been this team for years. Like, Oh, they're going to make it. They're going to make it. They're going to make it. They never make it. They're finally here after ridiculous playoff success. Um, but like Tampa, they're just, they're so deep. Like even like Kucherov, he hasn't played, right? That seems like an issue, right? Tampa is deep enough that they could like shelter Kucherov and have him on like, I don't know, the third line, mm -hmm. something like that. Um, I, I, it's difficult for me to not put my money on Tampa just because of everything that team has been through. What do you think Joel Quinville gives the Panthers uh, in this playoff series that maybe they wouldn't have had otherwise? Oh man, that is a very good question. Um, because Chicago, they don't, they don't, they really don't get enough credit for being feisty and scrappy. And I, and I don't mean necessarily tough. I mean, Tampa won last year because Tampa should have. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Whereas Chicago, the three years that they won, uh, every year they were bashing heads with the Kings, who in any other year could have won. And every year they were bashing heads with the Blues, who in any other year could have won. Like there were no uh, – the, the, the Red Wings on their way down. You know, the, like there the were – Sharks too. The Sharks, like th there were no easy paths really for those Chicago teams. And we, we joke about the 2015 one. I mean, Quinville is a master of matchups on account of he had three functional defensemen and won a Stanley cup uh, with them. Uh, the one, the one thing that I think he's going to sorely miss is Aaron Ekblad. Um, yeah. You know, that does Tough. make things. Yeah. It makes, and especially against Tampa for the love of God, who just comes at you in waves. Um, but you got to make Barkov the uh, this is this is his coming out party. I mean, we've all known about him for a long time, but he hasn't really been viewed as a superstar. And if he finds a way to not just shut Tampa down, but outscore them while he does it, like actually find a way to turn the puck over the other way, mm -hmm. put it in the back of their net. If he can do that, if he can be Jonathan Taves, for Joel Quinville, they got a fighting chance. Absolutely.
There was one stat I was looking at today that I thought was pretty pretty interesting, pretty cool. It was uh, Tampa is the only team this season to win every game they led after two periods. Wow! So when they when they lead after two periods, they are twenty six and zero this season. So the last team to do it was the Pittsburgh Penguins in the year they won the Stanley Cup. Uh, that was thirty nine and zero in fifteen sixteen, and then the team to go undefeated after winning after leading after two periods before that was the Chicago Blackhawks, who won the cup in fourteen fifteen. They mm-hmm. went twenty five and zero. So I don't know what it seems like. There's something in it in it in the, with teams that can shut it down after you have the lead after two periods because i feel like tampa they know how to win and i'm not gonna i don't want to pick florida in this matchup because i think there's too much experience there with the team who if they get the lead getting going into the third they can guarantee themselves hey we're gonna walk away with a victory in this game it's, and I, th- I just thought it was fascinating that the other two teams go undefeated were the lot uh pittsburgh and chicago who won went on to win the stanley cup it's an interesting matchup because it's one of the rare times where the numbers all point to one team Uh and our hearts and minds completely disagree with the numbers, like just based on what we've seen. And it's nothing against the Panthers. I mean, Jesus, they're one of the strongest teams in the league, but they're going up against easily the best three seed in the league in the entire league. And they might finish with fewer points in Minnesota, the, they they still got a game left, but I, how is the the reigning Stanley Cup champions? You have you have home ice advantage in round one, and you draw the reigning Stanley Cup champions, who are getting the the heart winner from two years ago back. Ah, oh, life's not fair. Florida finally gets in, and that's the the hand they're dealt. Well, all right, good luck. And like not all the numbers point towards Tampa because uh, Florida did they led the division in goals per game they led in shots. Mm-hmm. No, I, and... I'm saying the numbers favored Florida. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. okay, yeah. Florida is definitely the better team statistically, but I don't think anybody's really picking them. Up yet. Um, yeah, only because, and I think I think there's also just from a fan perspective, even if you don't watch the teams regularly, it's just it's Tampa's been a monster to play against since at least. What 2013, 24? I know they missed in 2015, but Stamkos was out. Like it's it's they've just been every year. They're this. They're seemingly unstoppable. They did win the cup finally last year, but they're just this unstoppable force every year, usually for a and while. Th- there's a little added incentive too for the Tampa Bay Lightning because a lot of them were with that 2015 team that ended up going to the Stanley cup final against Chicago and losing. Right. And it's stuck in their craw for years. And they were finally able to, you know, exercise those demons and win in the bubble. And now you got a chance to get your vengeance face to face against Joel Quinville. 